what's up y'all um so i was getting so much inspiration i'm trying to figure out which video to post because i really don't know which one but anyway um you know i i'm a pk and i come from that world of and i can't really i can't really articulate it in words of like what it feels like to be in the church world and i think for me i really have been trying to break out of a lot of things that don't seem true to who i am and um just walk in my truth and that's really what i've been trying to do is just walk in my truth um because that's the freedom that I have in Christ. Um, and I know some people um, may not agree or may not understand what I'm doing or why I choose to be to live so candid and live so transparent. And also I'm adding vulnerable in there too. <laughs> but I do it because I want to be a representation of a walking representation of God's grace and mercy. Um, I don't want to, I'm changing how I live myself, how I live out loud. I think when you're a PK and when you're raised in the church, you try to be people's standard. Like you try to be an example to people, but it's like, if your heart has not been changed in that particular area where you can be an example. Um, you're, in my opinion, you're doing it in vain, um, in a sense, because you're not doing it in truth. You know, you're not, that's not even who you are. It's like, it's almost kind of like similar to like they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. It's kind of, it reminds me of that just a little bit, just because we put on a mask for people to seem so holy. And it's like, we forget what true holiness is. Like you look at the Old Testament, you read the word of God, time and time again, God proves to his creation that holiness is him. True holiness is him. True transformation of what holiness is comes from the blood, comes from Jesus Christ dying on the cross. That's what true holiness, you know, looks like. And I think as much as we can evolve and change into better people and better individuals and grow at the end of the day, you will still never be perfect. I think the Bible proves to so many of us that you can't be me <laughs> without the blood. That's what the Bible is pretty much trying to convey. That you cannot, you cannot be like God without the blood. You know, perfectly cannot be like God. You cannot be him. You cannot be his nature without the blood. And I think the freedom that we have in Christ is the fact that we know that as much as I as much good as I do or as much of a better person that I become, I'm still not Jesus. I'm still not perfect. And so I think there should there should come an acceptance within yourself, a holy acceptance of your imperfection as a human being, you know, and there should be also a gratitude as well that, wow, I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be perfect because literally I can, you know, relish and, and, and walk in my perfection that was imputed on me, that was given to me by grace. And so anyways, um, I 
I don't want to be a Michelle Obama. I don't want to be a um, Heather Lindsay, Cornelius Lindsay. I don't want to be um, these public figures um, that unfortunately we have put a burden on them to always do things always the right way. I think that is a that is a unhealthy expectation that we have on public figures. We put public figures on a pedestal next to God and you're playing with fire because nobody's God. And we put these expectations on these public figures and these preachers and these pastors and, and the Pope and these, these spiritual leaders to always do the right thing. And it's like, they're human. They deserve to be able to let their hair down. They deserve to be able to, you know, be human, you know, be in a safe environment where their humanity is empathized with and um, understood. And we give them mercy. We give them grace, you know, because God does. Like, God gives all of us grace, you know, to be human. It doesn't take away from the fact of God wanting us to grow as individuals, but it doesn't also mean that God doesn't still walk with us during that process. And that process, you're not always doing the right thing. You're not. I'm sorry, you're not. And so, um, yeah. It's just really, really important that we kind of be true to ourselves and... Um, I know that we have a lot of old traditional ways of thinking where it's like everybody don't need to see every see all your business and you know I think there's some there's some truth to that there's some wisdom in that but I think we also do people a disservice when we're not our true authentic selves when we don't show the broken sides of ourselves and then when we also will we will also define or label what someone's doing as wrong and it's not wrong like I've there have been times where I've lived out my truth and you know in the back of my mind because of how I was raised it's like oh you know you're not you're not you're not looking holy enough and it's like well I'm sorry um what does looking holy look like without the help of the holy spirit I, like, I don't even think that we can fathom what looking holy looks like and also walking in that perfectly. Like, when I, when I, um, I don't, I don't put the standard of humans as my standard. I put the standard of perfection there. So, so since I put that as the standard, then I know that there's no pressure. For what? I can't attain it without the blood period in this flesh I will never be able to like walk out perfection perfectly period that's, what, that's why I love the gospel and what it stands for and which is why you know you guys see me doing certain things out loud y'all see me curse y'all see me you know drink a little drink a drink y'all see me you know maybe pop my booty sometime you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because that's me. That's me. I don't, I'm tired of like putting on a facade or saving face so that other people around me can say, oh, okay, she holy. She, she can be a part of this club. She good enough to, to, be, to be seen as good. Forget your, forget, forget, you know, me be, me having to be qualified by you forget that forget that you can go you can go take that qualification that you're trying to like you know um qualify me by and put it in lake minnetonka okay jumping in the lake like literally cuz i'm not i'm i'm not doing it anymore so i'm going to live in my truth and i'm also going to you know talk about jesus i'm also going to talk about what i love 
I'm also going to talk about thing, subjects that are taboo. <clears throat> you know, I'm going to do that because there are so many people out here in the church and not only in the church, but people who remain, haven't come into the fold yet that have this misconception about God. Um, and I'm hoping to break the mold if I have to do it by myself. I guess I have to do it by myself sometimes. Because like that's, that's what it feels like, you know, when when a lot of what you see or what's around you is people who are putting on masks. Like, I've, I've, been, I've been in rooms, I've been in people's faces that act one way, and then as soon as they, as soon as, as soon as they get inside of a church, they want to holy up, like, let me get my, let me get myself, and it's like, and bro, I just saw you taking a shot. Just saw you smoking weed the other day. And, and, you know, now you want to, you know, act holy in front of people for what? Who are you, who are you, who, who are you trying to like impress? I'm not doing it anymore. If you see me at a bar drinking something, go about your business. If you see me out with friends, you know, doing me, go about your business. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it doesn't mean, and once again, like I know some people like, oh, well, you know, you got people who need to hold you accountable. And that's, that's great. But my, my greatest accountability partner is the Holy Spirit. And he got me on, he got me. Thank you. He got me. And it doesn't mean that, I, it doesn't mean that I, that I don't want, you know, people coming to me, holding me accountable or, you know, because you need that. Like, you know, you, you need checks and balances. You, and I'm grateful for my brothers and sisters who are bold enough to hold me accountable. I appreciate it, but remember, this is my life. You have yours, I have mine. We have to walk our own path, and we have to also walk our own path of righteousness and sanctification. The sanctification process is just that, a process. And I personally don't, I don't have a um, desire to do that in a fake way. I want to do it in a real way. I want to do it by the transformation of the Holy Spirit, where he transforms my heart. And I no longer have the taste for it. You know, I no longer have the desire for it. And, I, and when you see me not doing it, it's because I don't want to do it anymore. I used to, you know, sleep around with women. I don't have a desire to do that anymore. And it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, <clears throat> and it doesn't mean that the desire doesn't come. But I fight the, the desire because... I've learned the benefit of, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. So if I'm doing something wrong, or that's out of order, I want to do it because I've learned the benefit of, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I've made the decision to not do this. Not, let me not do this right now in front of this person so that I won't be seen as wretched. Or let me not do this in front of this bishop or this person because, you know, I want to be seen as holy. I don't want to do that anymore. If I'm going to do it, it's going to be because I chose to not do it anymore. And God gets the glory out of that because it's in truth and not in fakeness and not in trying to, like, look holy like, like the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They would literally walk around with their holy garments in the market, acting like they're holy, but then behind closed doors, they were just evil men plotting and planning to kill Jesus. You see what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't want to do that. I want to be authentically me. And I'm going to enjoy it as best as I can. And I hope you do the same. You know, I hope that you enjoy this life. You know, I hope that you enjoy your freedoms that you have in Christ to learn to mess up to to enjoy you know all that good stuff I, I hope that you do that life's too short to be trying to like prove to other people that you're holy for what they didn't save you they can't save you Jesus did his yoke is easy and his burden is light take the yoke that he has and then learn of him and then grow with him like, he delights in walking with you. That's what the Word of God says. So delight yourself in him as he delights in you. I love you guys.